Hello, this is Randy Berth, and this is the Gospel Seed Sower Program. Thank you for tuning in today. Folks, we are living in the last days of Earth's history when evil is getting worse. Every wind of doctrine is blowing. Delusions and deceptions of the devil are getting more bold and in your face. The devil and his fallen angels are waging war on this planet and screaming for your attention on TV, radio, and the internet. They are waging war for your mind. You will not be able to trust every image, sound, or thought impression that speaks to your mind because Satan is going about like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. And if it were possible, he will deceive the very elect. Everything must be tested by the Word of God. If they do not totally agree with the Holy Bible, there is no light in them. I use the King James Version of the Holy Bible because it's the best version out there. You will need to know the King James Version of the Bible and trust it as the Word of God. By carefully comparing Scripture with Scripture to arrive at the truth. You will need to fortify your mind with the Holy Scriptures because you will not be able to believe all of what you see and hear in the media and even doctrine in the real life around you. Evil spirits will possess men and women and will lead the masses of people astray. You will need to know the proper interpretation of the Bible. Otherwise, the devil will try to get you to believe twisted interpretations of the Bible and try to make it say what it does not mean to get you to believe in a lie. You must know the Bible and trust it as the Word of God. You must know what it says so that you can quickly identify the counterfeits. The devil is a deceiver and he wants you to think that Thought messages and impressions that he suggests to you are your own ideas or words from God or that you are some special gifted channel or receiving messages from the dead or from some being from outer space. He also tries to play God and he wants you to think that his suggestions and thought impressions are the voice of God. He wants you to believe that he and his fallen angels are God and the Holy Spirit. Now remember, the devil is a deceiver and he has been at this practice of deception for a very long time. Satan has lying and deception down to a science. He wears so many masks and uses so many different types of smoke screens and diversions that it is hard to know what and who to believe anymore. Here's an example of how the devil gets people to take a few verses in the Bible and try to twist them to support a lie. And what is the lie? Well, this lie is that fallen angels crossbred with humans and had half angel, half human children that supposedly grew up to be huge giants. So what about this verse? In the Bible that they say talks about angels crossbreeding with humans and creating giants. Well, there is no such verse in the Bible that says that, but I will show you the verse that people twist to try and make it sound that way. But first, before we read from God's Word, let's pray and ask God to send the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and understanding about what we read from his word. Kind Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercy and your love. We ask you to send your precious Holy Spirit to help us to understand what we are about to read from your holy word, your precious book, the Holy Bible. We thank you for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, here's the four main verses that people use to try and prove that angels crossbred with humans. And after that, we will read 
the words of Jesus that actually disproves the idea that angels can have children. Here are the verses in question. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Verse 2. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Verse 4. There were giants in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Who were the sons of God? Who were these giants? Were the giants created by fallen angels crossbreeding with female humans? Well, let's find out who the giants were, and then let's find out from the Bible if angels can actually crossbreed with the human species and have children. Imagine, if you will, God created a perfect world. Then he formed man of the dust of the earth, and man became a living, breathing soul. A living breathing creature. He created Adam and Eve with immortality and that they would have eternal life as long as they would continue to eat from the tree of life that was in the garden. The tree of life had ingredients of vitality with immortality, a very rare tree and fruit that God would only trust with creatures who would obey him. The Creator also created another tree that would cause their robe of righteousness to disappear if they ate from that forbidden tree. And that tree of knowledge of good and evil was put there as a test. God wanted Adam and Eve to obey Him and trust His word. Don't eat from that tree, He said. When their Creator said, don't eat from that tree of knowledge of good and evil, He meant it. And he expected them to obey him without question. He told them to not eat from that tree. And if they did, they would die. But Eve disobeyed and ate the fruit and took some to Adam and he ate the fruit too. They lost their immortality as a result because they disobeyed God. And they were driven from the garden where the tree of life was and could no longer eat from that tree. They were driven out of the Garden of Eden, and God put a shiny angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to guard it so that no one could get back in. After they were driven out of the garden, they still lived long lives. Adam lived to be over 900 years old. It took a while for the vitality from eating from the tree of life to wear off. They were giants. And so were their sons, Cain and Abel. And the first few generations of Adam were also giants. Because the vitality of Adam eating from the tree of life was still in their blood. But because they could not eat from the tree of life, future generations started to get smaller. So these first few generations of men became men of old, men of renown. The ones that were followers of God were called sons of God, and they were giants compared to the multitudes of smaller people around them who were from the younger generations. The sons of God are the ones that followed God and had the Spirit of God in them, and they abstained from sexual immorality and other sins and ate healthy, wholesome foods and lived longer, longer, happier lives than others who lived lives of rebellion and ate things that would shorten their sinful lives. Sin had a direct effect on the length of their lives and their size. Sin was in opposition to eternal life. It caused Adam and Eve and the rest of mankind to be barred from the tree of life. And as the Bible tells us, 
some of the sons of God started to fall away from God. Now that we know who the giants were, the sons of God, the men of old, men of renowned, let's get a clearer picture of what the Bible identifies as sons of God. Let's read Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. And this is speaking about the followers of God. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. They didn't call their creator Jesus Christ back before the flood, but they knew him as their creator. John chapter 1 verse 12 tells us how to become a son of God. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And Romans Chapter 8, verse 14, clearly identifies who the sons of God are. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God, who saw the daughters of men and took them as wives, were men of old, men of renown, older men who were followers of God that wanted to have younger women from the tribe of Cain and took as many younger wives as they wanted. The daughters of men that the Bible is talking about here were not the children of God. They were the female descendants of Cain. And you may remember the story of Adam and Eve's firstborn son, Cain. He killed his younger brother, Abel. And God told Cain that the ground would no longer yield its strength to him. Now, as we read in the Bible, Cain was not a very godly person. First, he offered fruits and vegetables as a sacrifice to God instead of a lamb. God had instructed them to sacrifice a lamb. Then Cain killed his own brother who followed God's instructions. So Cain probably did not raise his own family to be very spiritual. Cain took his wife and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden. The Bible does not tell us what Cain lived on after he killed Abel and before he built a city. He was a farmer until God cursed him and told the earth not to yield its strength to Cain because of his sin of killing his brother. But Cain survived somehow. In fact, God put a mark on Cain so that others would be afraid to kill him. Cain had a son and built a city and named it after his son Enoch. And Enoch had a son, so there must have been daughters born to Cain to keep the childbearing going in his tribe. Eve had another son. Seth was born to Adam and Eve when Adam was 130 years old. Seth had a son called Enos. And the Bible says that after Enos was born, men started to call upon the name of the Lord again. So Seth was a godly man and taught his son Enos about God. And Seth taught all of his children about God. Adam had more sons and daughters too. And they were not individually named in the Bible, but Seth was. Because it would be in the line of Seth that the Messiah would come. Seth was the leader of a tribe called the Sethites. And they were also sons of God because they followed after God. They had the Spirit of God in them. All of the sons of Adam were giants, but not all of them were sons of God. Only those that followed after God were called sons of God. And some of the sons of God started to fall away from God because of their lust for women of the world who corrupted them. The sons of God who saw the daughters of men and took them as wives were men of old, men of renown, older men, who were followers of God that wanted to have women from the tribe of Cain, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The daughters of men were female descendants from the tribe of Cain. It was when some of the sons of God started to fall away from him by taking women from the tribe of Cain as wives that God said in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, 
yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. It's obvious that some of these men who were sons of God went crazy over sex and lost their way. And by that time, other men who were some of the most evil men on earth were crossbreeding with animals and crossbreeding animals with other animal species. The Bible does not name who they were or identify them. But this is one of the reasons why God said in verse 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. The world was becoming very wicked. Verse 11 says, The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Verse 12 says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So the sons of God dwindled down in number until there were only Noah and his three sons left. And God destroyed the world with a flood because it had become very, very wicked. God spared Noah and his three sons and their wives. So who were the Nephilim that people talk about? If you are thinking about offspring from fallen angels crossbreeding with humans, that did not happen. They did not exist. Now there is no doubt that there really were giants back before the flood. Some of them were sons of God and some of them were not. But they were not the offspring of fallen angels crossbreeding with humans. That did not happen. That just absolutely did not happen. That lie was likely created to make it look like Jesus Christ was nothing more than another hybrid created by just another sex-crazed angel or God trying to crossbreed with a human. Satan has a variety of false ideas that are attempts to take away from the sacredness of the birth of Christ and to try and downgrade God and his son Jesus. Remember, Satan hates Jesus and Satan wants to be God. But Satan is nothing more than a fallen angel trying to pretend to be God. But Jesus is a real true God and his father is a real true God and deity. Together with the Holy Spirit, they are one and they are the creators of this world. They are the Trinity, which is the true God. And if you want proof that a real God crossbreeding with a human did not create a flesh and blood giant, just read about the life of Jesus Christ. And nowhere in the Bible will you find a scripture that supports the idea that Jesus was a huge giant. Now let's get to the part where Jesus disproved the whole idea that angels can crossbreed with humans. Do angels marry people? No. Jesus was asked a question by a Sadducee about what would happen if a woman in this life was married and widowed by seven different brothers and she finally died. Whose wife would she be in the resurrection? Here's what the Bible says. Matthew 22 verse 29 and 30. Verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. How will we be like the angels in heaven? Angels do not marry. Why do they not marry? Because angels were not designed to have children. Marriage is for having children. Angels are neither male nor female. And we will not be male or female in heaven either. Talk about population control. There is no place in the Bible that says that angels have DNA and seed that can mix with humans to create half angel and half human babies. And there is no place in the Bible that says that their DNA changed to make that possible when they came here to earth. Some people like to argue that just because angels do not marry in heaven does not mean that they are neither male nor female. 
What? Do they realize what they are saying? Why would a God who hates sin create a being with male or female sexual desires and not allow them to marry? God would not do that. God does not want there to be fornication and adultery in heaven. Humans have male and female features. But male and female features are not angelic features. So away with this idea that fallen angels can crossbreed with humans. Away with the idea that fallen angels ever crossbred with humans. If you are thinking thoughts like that, push them out of your mind. It's one of the deceptions and delusions of the last days. Well, folks, this was a very interesting and deep subject. And if you ever entertain thoughts that angels can crossbreed with humans, I hope you got your eyes open. This is Randy Berth saying, may God bless you and you have a good day. And keep looking to Jesus. Oh,